Yeah, he's on comments. Hey there, beer two. Welcome back to Maxwell Star and Beer Analysis One Hundred and One. Uh, tonight is a uh, somewhat special night. We've got three. Uh, sorry, we got six people on the panel tonight for Hop Cities Barking Squirrel. That's right. We're taking another look at something from the Hop City Brewery. Previously on this channel, we actually looked at uh, the Eight Sin Dark Lager. We like that, I believe. We gotta take a look at their classic product, which is their their kind of their mainstay, an amber lager. Anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go to the uh, panel that we have with us tonight. And we've got in the uh, in the corner here, we've got Redbeard just whistling, minding his own business. What be going down, people of the panel? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? How you doing, man? How are you? you I'm good? doing okay. You yeah, good? I'm doing Emotionally, okay. all together, you're a you're, good you're, you're, you're guy? Awesome. I'm still, I'm still tired and broke from, uh, from the, the weekend, so... Glad you made it, man. Glad you made it. We can talk more about that on the after chat. Anyway, moving right along, we've also got Lee who's back with us tonight. How are you doing, Lee? I'm happy to be a part of this fantastic video production. Damn straight, Skippy. Anyway. Don't call me Skippy, motherfucker. Yeah, sorry. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving right along to Chris, who's no longer in the basement. He's on the 10th, and that's been the way of things for like over a year now. How are you doing yeah, tonight? Almost a year. Almost a year on the tenth. And congratulations uh, on op uploading another video. I know. Uh, you know, good things have to uh, you know, good things come to those who wait, I guess. I don't I don't know. I see that Lee's in the basement. He's not in my old basement. He's he's back in in his basement where he, where he he's there. in the basement and it's even danker looking than Greg, Greg's parking garage, which to you know, be fair, Greg's parking garage doesn't look that dank because it's a very posh building he lives in. Speaking of Greg, let's go over to Greg and say, how are you doing tonight, Greg? I see you're back indoors for a night because uh, Agnes isn't home. She's not, but she will be home soon to tell me all the things I've done wrong today. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to be here, Nick. And I got to say, this is a really exciting beer, not only because you know, we're all here to try it, but you know, our friend Craig can get it from Britain. So he's, with oh wait, he's not with us. No, oh, snap. That's all right. Oh. I'm pretty sure he'll get next week's beer. I hope. Uh, moving right along to the last one, last certainly not least, even we always, even though we always leave him for last. Ash, how are you doing hey, tonight? Doing great. Missed last week's show. Sorry. It's all right. Almost missed you guys, but I didn't, and I decided to show up tonight. So hello. Cool. Showed up tonight because your uh, your uh, kids' soccer game was canceled. Baseball. My kids Baseball. don't. Run. Whatever. I think I listen. You know. And uh, coordination. Right. Some kind of sports ball. Some kind of sports ball. All right. So just a second here. Me and my infinite wisdom opened up the wrong history. Uh, just a second. A professional organization. I had a great. You're fucking kidding me. What other histories do you have on your computer? <laughs> what that's kind of, <laughs> seems kind of weird. Okay. All right, all right. Well, I've uh, I've got all the histories from every previous one, and I opened up eight sin by accident, and uh, but it turns out that it's just the first line I forgot to change, and it's actually is barking squirrel. So let me start reading. Uh, we've already looked at Hop City on this fucking channel. Jesus, <laughs> I know. Uh, so we don't have to talk a whole lot about uh, Hop City, but uh, they opened up in uh, 2009 at the site of the old Niagara Brewing Company brewery in Brampton. Uh, Hop City is a wholly owned craft brewing subsidiary of uh, Moosehead Breweries. Uh, the brewery is, however, independently run by brewmasters Kevin Gray and John Gagliardi. Um, Hop City's first beer at launch was Barking Squirrel Amber Lager, based on the original recipe by Kevin and John. Hop City's other beers include Eight Sin Dark Lager, Hop Bot IPA, Polly Wana Pilsner, Payday Saison, Lawn Chair Weiss, and Cheat Day Black Forest Porter. Barking Squirrel Lamber Lager is a 5.0% ABV, 24 IBU Amber Lager brewed with Hallertau, Mittelfrü, and Saz hops, Pale Two Row, Crystal, Dark Crystal, and Munich Malts, and Torrified Wheat. Barking Squirrel has won a multitude of awards, both at professional, eh, provincial, national, and worldwide stage. Uh, several other beers from Hop City have also won awards at various levels, including Gold. Okay, this is actually Hop City win. Uh, Barking Squirrel winning gold and 2013, 2016, and 2017 Brewing Canadian Brewing Awards, which doesn't really come as much of a surprise. Anyway, 
So that said, let's uh, move right along to uh, personal mm -hmm. history. Oh, actually, you know what? We, let's uh, take a look at some of the comments. Uh, Lee, do you want to take a look, see if there's anybody actually watching this? Sure. Uh, we got five watching. It says, uh, the Beer Patrol's here saying he's super stoked. Uh, nice. Craig from Kent Beer Review says, hey, gents. Earth is in here saying excellent. Um, Craig says he's looking forward to drinking this, just not on this panel like was planned. Uh, Craig also says, cheers, Greg. Um, and Redbeard says, what be going down, people? Stay out of the chat, Redbeard. You're muddying up the comments. Sorry, man. Sorry. That, that, that was and, the only one. That's technically talking to yourself, considering you're talking to the panel and you're on it. I, I, I talk to myself all the time. So that's why fun. are you talking to yourself? Because I'm a what fucking crazy quiet. person. Yeah, well, okay, then. I can't, I can't say anything but that. All right, so moving right along, what is everybody's personal histories? And we'll start with you talking to yourself, and you can talk to yourself as much as you want right now. Go for it. What's your history on Barking Squirrel? Have you had it before? Uh, I've had it a couple times. It's uh, something I had it at a festival as far as reviews go on my channel. Um, while at the Collingwood Beer Fest, after I'd had a few, the review on this beer is uh, terrible. But uh, the beer itself, it's, it's something I don't mind. It's a uh, drinkable, easy kind of just a go-to if you don't want anything crazy, hop bomb, what I usually drink kind of shit. But, it's, you know, I don't mind it. Hmm. Yeah. Cool story. Uh, Lee, what's your personal history on Barking Squirrel? Okay, so um, I was actually surprised to find that this has been around for a long fucking time now. Um, I first had it in 2012, and I didn't buy it a lot. Like, I bought it a few times. Like, yeah, it's all right. Moving on kind of thing, right? Um, I've actually bought it, like, four or five times now in the last couple of weeks just because we've been planning to do this thing over and over again, and we haven't done it. So, um I've been trying it more lately, and once I get to my review, I'll talk about that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much my history. It's like I like the other Hop City stuff way, way better generally, or I have over the years. So I've always been buying like Hopbot and um, Eight Sin as of late, more than anything else. So um, yeah, that's about it. Nice, Chris. What's your history with? Uh... Um... I just yeah. checked. I just checked my Untapped, and I know I've had this before. Like I just, I, well, last two weeks ago, I had two of them because we were supposed to do it. Um, and before that, about a year ago, I had this as well. And I'm surprised. I just looked at my Untapped. I was trying to check out the actual date when I had it, but I never Untapped it, so I just did now. And um, yeah, so I have had this beer, and yeah, so it's. I've only had this is my fourth can ever. Worth can ever. That's a that's an odd number of like to remember that you've had four. So I've had one about a year ago, and then I had two from the from when we were supposed to do it when Nick was sick. Ah, fair enough. And that's his number four. Sorry about that. It's, it's actually an even number. Just saying. <laughs> uh -huh. Well that's played. A very even number to remember. Well played, you fucking bastard. Uh, all right, all right, Craig. What's your uh, what's your history on barking squirrel? Squoil. Squoil. Thank you for having me on the show. I have had this beer before. I don't know how many times I have thought it. Goodbye. <laughs> I farted. Good night. Well, I'm glad you muted yourself when you did that. Uh, let's go. But what? I don't know where you got the I farted from. But... It sounded like you said I farted. No, you, you got farts okay. in the brain. My... Probably. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along to Ash. Um, oh god. Um, so first time I tapped this was two years ago. Uh, I know I've, I'd had it beforehand because um, like Hop City was one of those breweries that was readily available at the LCBO. Um, shit, I just put hot pepper in my eye. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was chopping up hot peppers earlier. Shit. So um, <laughs> So I've had this before. before Ladies and I gentlemen, Ashley Sexton is not going to do his pirate impersonation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really just, just remember for the after show when you go up to take a piss, just you know, yeah. watch what hand you're using. Holy oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. So I've had this before. I've had it a few times. I had it two weeks ago. Uh, I haven't really purposely bought it. 
recently, other than when we had that canceled show. And holy shit, I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, right. And when you get back, you have to speak in a pirate accent the whole time. Yeah, oh, you are. You'd be wearing an eye patch, boy. All right, so I'll go into my personal history about it. The first time I ever had uh, uh, Harp, Hop City Barking Squirrel was back, I think, I, I think for the first little while it wasn't available in New Brunswick I'm, or in the Maritimes, and I'm assuming it was had something to do with, like, maybe it was like a local brewery kind of thing from 2009 to, like, 2012 because I had it around the same time that Lee did. Uh, my original review from uh, Ma Maxwell Star's beer review is uh, number 411. And uh, that was around October 7th, 20, 2012. And nobody disliked it. That's that's kind of interesting to know. I I actually really liked it. I, I don't I think I might have said something about like I, I didn't like it as much as like um, Boston Lager from uh, from um, Sam Adams, but uh, I thought it was actually a really reasonable um, like Vienna lager or amber lager um, for the for what you get and considering it's it's uh a moosehead product is pretty ubiquitous around here and but in the years since it's kind of i've had it more than once i i want to say that maybe i've had it like three or four times but i can't remember the exact number like like chris can um i know i tapped it again like last year after having some at a bar and uh i i still i'm still pretty sure i really liked it but one of the biggest things about hop city barking squirrels that it's really caught on the local area and it's become one of those beers that you see moosehead marketing everywhere and it was pretty big for a while even now you can still and i couldn't find one for tonight even now you can still find like hop city barking squirrel glasses everywhere at every freaking value village or thrift store that sells glassware anyway i'm getting too much detail but uh, let's continue on is there uh, any comments or Ash, now that you're back, do you want to finish giving your history? Or do you want to just wait until... Yeah, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> you're good. Yeah, you okay? Fine, that, that really hurts. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't think I really miss anything. Um, other than, yeah, I, I've had it a few times. I know I'd had it before I had tapped it, just because Hop City was pretty readily, uh, readily available when I was getting into, into craft beer and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's it. No, you nothing use, overly exciting. Did you use an emergency washing uh, unit there in, in your home? Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> double squirts going up right, right into the eyeballs, like the like the goggle kind of thing where you put it on your yeah. face. A little. Pfft. Yes, nice. exactly. Somebody clip that double squirts into the eyeballs comment and use it out of context, please. Please, somebody <laughs> use. That. It's like Jamie. I'm speaking to you. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, moving right along, uh, we have any comments? Paul is here. Yeah. He, said, he, did, yeah. he just said evening, evening gents. Paul. Well, Hello, Paul. You know, we're not doing a macro tomorrow or next week. Paul says I could probably find this beer if I was unlucky. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So we don't have that many more comments. Um, we might as well move on to uh, personal opinions. Redbeard, you ready to give your uh, rating? Yeah, man. It's not bad. It's uh, a log. It's more of a. I don't know. Yeah, like like I just didn't even notice until now. It says it says amber lager on it. Yeah, awesome. It's a amber lager, and it's uh, what it says it is. I like it. I don't love it. I don't dislike it. I'm gonna say out of ten, my uh, personal is gonna be somewhere in the I don't know, probably like seven point five. It's a little boring. And uh, overall, I'd give that probably about an uh, 8.5 or so because it's it seems to be done pretty well compared to other Amber Loggers I've had. So so that's your style, 8.5? Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Right on. All right. And uh, let's move over to Lee. Okay. So the last few weeks that I've, I've had a can of this uh, – you know, in anticipation for the hangout, as we said previously, um, I've come to enjoy this a lot more than uh, I had initially when I had a few cans back when I was reviewing it and all that shit. I think it's pretty fairly robust for, you know, a, a pseudo uh, craft beer kind of thing, you know, sort of a crafty uh, example of, of this sort of style. Um it, I think the the fact that it has German some you know some predominantly German hops in it 
kind of makes one think it's much more like you said, uh, Nick, on sort of like the Vienna Lager kind of style uh, side of things. And it makes me think of Sam Adams quite a bit. But in this case, and having had some Sam Adams recently, I like this a lot better than Sam Adams. Um, it's a little bit sweeter, uh, a little bit more, uh, again, like I said, robust. Uh, it's got a little bit more going on. Um, and overall, I think it's a, just a bit more enjoyable. Um, so in the nebulous amber lager slash Vienna lager, you know, basically just dark Germanic lager, I don't know what style you would honestly put this in at this point. Like I, everyone says basically amber lager, but um, I think, you know, style wise, it probably hits about an 8.5 somewhere around there just to be safe. And my overall enjoyment of this has gone up. I would, I'd probably go, you know what? I'd probably go solid eight. I, I quite like it now. So there we go. Very nice. So right. for, for style, what would you give it? Uh, 8.5. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, Chris, you, just, you might as well leave yourself unmuted and okay. uh, say what you think. What's on uh, your um, mind? What do you think? How's the, the drinking? On the can, it says it's 24 IBUs, and, and then it says at the bottom, it says there's acts of no, noble hot bitterness. Nah, there's no hot bitterness in this at all. It's more sweet than anything else. Um, well, that's where the caramel malt sweetness comes in. Um, it's not, you know, it, there's nothing offensive with this beer. It's very drinkable. Um, I don't know if I would, I'm not a big fan of the amber lagers in the summertime. I find them a little bit heavier, but, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't find it offensive. Like I said, there's a, uh, like a no hot bitterness at all. Um, I can just give this my scores. I'll just do it, whatever it's uh, for style. It is what it is. I, I'll give it an 8 out of 10 for style. Um, and for my overall personal enjoyment, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. There you go. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'll just add to this and say, you know what, for people out there that are trying to start off getting into the into the craft beer world or whatever, then you know what, this is not a bad one to start off with because it's not, it's not really that far from a lot of the macros. There's a little bit more flavor in this, which I'll give that to them for sure but you know it's a good little transition beer for them if you, if you like uh clancy's amber ale from uh moosehead this might be a nice little transition beer there for you, you. Mm -hmm. mm. no i definitely hear that 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 part um all right so moving right along to greg everybody wants to know what greg's thinking no i don't know what greg thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, know what your dog's thinking. This is the best beer analysis ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it's an amber ale. I don't really like amber ales that much. It's they're always too sweet for my taste, and this one's no different. I, I tend to like them a little bit hoppier. Um, but I mean, this one's okay. seven, seven all around for style and enjoyment. And not, not. Can you stop squeaking? It's good. Fine. It's gonna be a random squeaking on the channel tonight. I just know it. Anyway, moving right along to Ash, what's your thoughts on this beer? Uh, well, you know, I got a few tasting notes. Uh, like out of the can, and you know, freshly poured, I, I picked up like some sort of weird sulfuric, you know, generic lager smell coming off the off the nose, which is a little weird because uh, I'd never picked that up. I didn't pick that up last week or the two weeks ago when I had it. Um, yeah, uh, much to what everyone's tasting, you know, I'm, I'm getting like that, like a mild molasses, a touch like brown sugar, that, that sweetness, that caramel sweetness is sort of popping through a little bit, a little sticky on the back. Um, but that said, it's, it definitely has a lot more flavor than your generic amber, amber lager does like your macro. So, you know, to, to that point, I, I give kudos to actually popping off a little bit of flavor in the, in a lager when you're trying to appease to a larger scale of people. So um, overall, you know, I, I think this is a great beer to have in the fridge for people who are coming over. You know, if you don't want to buy the bucket beer that uh, is going to be all over the place in Ontario soon, um, this would be, a, you know, it's it's a nice approachable beer. There, there's nothing offensive to it that someone who doesn't drink craft beer wouldn't, you know, um, 
there's, there's nothing here that people wouldn't really enjoy if, if they do enjoy uh, an amber lager. Um, so, you know, coming from like a, like an amber lager perspective, I'm going to give this, uh, what did I say? Yeah, an, an eight for the style. Uh, personal enjoyment, like a style like this, uh, I think as Chris and uh, we mentioned, it, it's, you know, it's, it's better as, as the weather cools off a bit. At which point, I'd probably lean towards a brown ale before I, I lean toward towards an amber lager. So, you know, personal enjoyment for me for this would probably be, I'd say, seven. Hmm. There we go. Right on. Well said. All right, so let's get over to my opinion. In my own opinion, uh, I found it. Uh, I found it copy. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, my thoughts on this were that uh, you do get the uh, the noble hops that they're talking about. Um, I, I found I forget who who was it that said something. I don't get. I think it was Chris that said uh, I don't really get the noble hop bitterness. And like noble hops are kind of like uh, like herbal, metallic, or grassy uh, usually in the back, and they don't come off as strong as like the hops you would get in an IPA. Uh, that said, I do get those those here. I get this uh, this herbal kind of uh, metallic hop note uh, lingering in the back, uh, very much like a like a like not like metallic like straight up friggin' metal like you would get out of some lagers, but just this gentle uh, like like copper coiny kind of taste. Um, it's got a nice fruity caramel uh, and bready uh, a bready uh, malt body to it. Uh, that's it's not too heavy. It's got a nice uh, got a nice body to it. It's a um, the flavor the flavors are are, are yet uh, even so a little bit mild and uh, also very simple. There's not like uh, a huge complexity off of this one here that you would. I don't know if it's really something that would benefit the style or not, but it's just, it comes off kind of plain. Um, but overall, I think for, if you were to call this in like Amber Lager or Vienna Lager or something, that, that uh, Paul Park rating on either one, um, I do think it really kind of fits the style. It's not my favorite of the style. Um, and overall, I, I, so I'm going to give that an eight. And uh, for overall, I'm going to give it a seven. And that's just my own opinion. Oop, sorry. Yes, I'm trolling. All right. Uh, moving right along, do we have any more uh, comments? Yeah, just a couple more here. Um, Hillbilly Wine 101 says, hello, all. Hello, Hillbilly Wine. Um, Paul says, this is shaping up to be another excellent video from Dr. Nick's Macro Apologist Power Hour, but what's the beer for next week? And we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, he says, this squirrel is barking up the wrong tree. Well... And he says, well, it's got alcohol in it, so it's at least an 8 out of 10. Uh, Urs says, it's secretly an alt beer. Um, <laughs> P.A. Brunus says, from Bose, for some reason, yeah, I guess. Um, Paul says, you can tell Nick started drinking these beers beforehand and wrote down his thoughts, totally uh, daring it up. Okay. Yeah. And he says, 93 garbage. Oh, daring it up. Okay, I get it. 93 garbage. There we go. Right. Oh, good old Paul always saying something controversial to get, get a rise out of somebody. Paul would way. do that. Yeah, Paul would never do that. God. Anyway. All right, so we have any uh, any comments before we get over to the uh over to the scores? Like on the on the panel here, anybody got any thoughts? Well, I like it. You like it, you love it. It's better than sitting in a heat wave. I wonder if this would have got better scores if it was winter time or fall. Near, near like. I wonder if it got better Probably. scores for MGD. I, I, I would say that's a fair assessment because everyone's. Well, not everyone. I mean, I, I know. No, I, I, I I don't think my opinion would change. Like it, it would still taste the fucking same. Well, my apartment is nicely air conditioned now, so it's not like I'm sitting in the heat drinking it. So it wouldn't be that much of a different experience at all. Yeah, yes. I'm like, my well, I got the AC cranked, buddy. It's like 17 degrees in here. It's fucking awesome. Damn it. Fucker. But no, yeah, I mean, my, my opinion wouldn't change because it's the basement down here. It's actually cool. It's actually like, I think, maybe 15 to almost 20 degrees less than what it is outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> so close to 20 then. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of 35 or whatever it is outside. God. I'm a seasonal right. style drinker, so you know, for me, like I, I generally don't wouldn't drink a lot of maltier beers 
like more sweeter beers during the summer months. You know, if if anything, I'm drinking a lot of pilsners and drinking Kolsch's, drinking some IPAs, some sours this time of year. So you know, my mindset just yeah. wouldn't be thinking towards like the maltier stuff. That's all. Yeah, and you know what? I'm gonna actually agree with that. I'm thinking like this time of year. I'm thinking of like uh, like easier to drink ones. Like I hate to say it, like. A you know, pale lager or a pilsner or yeah. something light, like a wit beer, very light, effervescent body. Something that's actually going to go. Why don't you just, just compromise and go with a really great IPL? <laughs> that's that's not a bad choice either. I have had uh, a couple of decent IPLs. I'm not sure if I've had a good IPL since like Mad and Noisy was here. I don't think I can get that anymore. I think uh, I saw it in Quebec. Cameron's, Cameron's, I think they had one in one of their four packs and it was actually really tasty. Hmm. But uh, with this right here, I do find it kind of like the, the malt body on it. It's not like a, I would say like a heavy body and it's kind of simple, but at the same time, it's the sorry, the, the copper coin bitterness and the malt, the uh, how heavy the like the, the sweetness is kind of really say I wouldn't find it very refreshing for a summer drinking beer. Anyway. Um, let's move over to Chris because I, I believe he's ready with the scores. Oh, now yeah. you now. And oh, go ahead. Oh, all right, let's uh, let's get this thing ready to go. What's going on here? Oh, computer's acting up. Damn unprofessionalism. Anyway, so this uh, this final scores this week is brought to you by absolutely nothing. I'm not even kidding. Uh, I'm you know, running behind, and uh, I told you to do a sponsorship, so it's not the shit now. So we all might as well just quit. But anyway, here's our final scores for. The Hop City Brewing Company's Barking Squirrel, the Amber Lager, is we got an 8.00 for style and a 7.25 for overall enjoyment. No MGD. It's not MGD. It's no not MGD. MGD. It's not even and Miller uh, Miller High Life. I, for, I forgot this. And at the bottom it says I did forget the sponsor tag. So my bad. My bad. Not even Miller High Life. Actually, I think our overall enjoyment on Miller High Life was lower, wasn't it? I forget. I don't know. I don't remember what I did last week. It's been a long weekend. Do we even know anything anymore? Not really. We just wing it. We've been winging it for almost a year now. And that's actually uh, a segue into uh, what's next week's beer since it's already been asked. Um, Beer Analysis 101 started on Lee's channel on August 16th of last year. Um, This means that next Wednesday is August 15th, and we're going to have the one-year anniversary beer. Uh, it's not the best beer we've looked at on Beer Analysis 101, but it's one I'm excited for and I'm sure is going to get a decent turnout. We've got are going to look at Rochefort 10. Ooh. Ooh, fancy. One year anniversary. What beer have we looked at that's better than that other than maybe MGD? CBS. Remember I'm CBS? I'm sad I didn't make that fucking beer analysis. Well, I'm looking forward to next week. It should be a good one. Yeah, I'm going to say, since I uh, handed over the reins to you, Nick, I'm proud that you didn't make a total embarrassment of yourself and the show. You're still better than a lot of the other shows out there. I'm not going to mention any names. And let's just rock on for our one-year anniversary. Damn right. Right, right on. Awesome. Good sponsors for next week, if I remember. And no, I will. Like a Rockford on. All right. All right. So we having last comments there from uh, I see the beer patrol is hanging out in the comment the comments now. Yeah, he's getting a little bit more vocal here. Uh, Paul and Redbeard had some sort of little love fest over air conditioning. I'm not going to read that. Uh, uh, beer patrol says don't ever compliment Redbeard, Paul, for fuck's sakes. <laughs> um, beer patrol says Rochefort ten. Does that mean Paul shows up? And in, and then he also says, dude, that might. Be the best beer you've look, <laughs> looked at on beer, beer analysis 101. Um, and <laughs> yeah, probably. He says, fuck CBS in comparison. Uh, Paul says, nope, I work. And oh, West Coast. Paul man. says, and then Paul says, Nick knows how to exclude me. Well, no, actually, your mm-hmm. boss is exclu- excluding you at that point, I think. But you know, yeah, that's totally on Paul. Yeah, it's too bad you didn't have your old job still, Paul. You could have just drank it at work. <laughs> Yeah, really. The one where you would be hanging out on online hangouts until like four in the fucking morning at yeah, work. Then, then, <laughs> then, you could fix, then you could fix a robot or two with some Rochefort down your fucking throat, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, 
That's would be better in general. And Dan's in the chat too. Hi, Dan. Yeah, East Coast Nick. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. Hey. He's, he's right on. All right. I think that pretty much sums it up for uh, Hop City Barking Squirrel. We're definitely going to be coming on late in a few minutes to uh, do our traditional after chat hangout. Um, if uh, anybody enjoyed watching this, of course, subscribe for more. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna pour myself out on YouTube, and I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for being on the chat here, uh, especially after doing this for personally almost doing this for a year and uh, um and and uh, of course lee's visionary uh of uh, being a visionary that started this whole thing you are such a visionary lee visionary visionary, visionary. And, and, and listen dollarshaveclub.com uh <laughs> squarespace yeah. squarespace um Wix. yep um blue yeah, apron still, still blue share apron. master get, class Get ten dollars off your blue apron, you know. Get get ten dollars off your blue uh, apron. Yeah, yeah. Masterclass craft beer reviewers. Uh, all right, all right, all right. You like them too? I should get you guys <laughs> to do all interviews before I uh, do the sponsorship. We can post that online. Oh, Back a year ago, before beer analysis one hundred and one, we had to watch Jay Terry. <laughs> yeah, well, we we did kind of figure out how to build a better examination. And then anyway, so moving on lock. after that, I'm just saying. Quackity schmackity do. All right, we'll leave it on that note. Jesus Thanks Christ. for watching, folks. Talk nice. to you folks later. Cheers. Uh, peace out. Penis. <laughs>